All right, guys, so coming back for video number two of this car. Uh, as you guys saw in the last video, if you did not watch the last video, please, I recommend watching it before you watch this video. Otherwise, stuff won't really make sense. So go check it out, put it up right here. But in the last video, we actually had a fuel pump issue. So what was going on is I'd run it. I ran it for about 10 minutes or so, breaking the engine in, and then it lost fuel pressure. My fuel bowls are empty. I don't know if it is the fuel lines, fuel tank, fuel pump, whatever it is, but I am going to go ahead and kind of investigate now and then hook up a you know repaired fuel system to finish breaking the motor in so i can get that out of the way so i can start working on stuff like the brakes and other stuff so first thing i want to do is go look at this fuel pump and start looking at the lines going to it the fuel pump's brand new the entire motor is brand new so i don't understand why there would be anything wrong with this fuel pump so the first thing i want to do is take the line going to the tank off on um, which you can barely see way down there where the fuel filter is right where my finger is um it's not focused but i'm going to take that line off and kind of just see if it just gradually will drain you know fuel out of it because if it isn't then that tells me that line going to the tank is clogged or whatever you know there's just no, nothing in it but um, that's the first thing I want to try because it should work with this fuel pump I don't want to have to use this really OG you know really <laughs> it's kind of cool uh, OG from the 90s fuel pump. Uh, I could probably actually find the date on this thing. But yeah, because I really don't want to have to use this OG Mallory pump if I don't have to, because I really don't want to take it out of the box. This was what Mike let me borrow. But I think it's from the 90s. This thing's like OG as hell. It's got the original box and everything. So I don't want to use it if I don't have to. Um, so the first thing I want to check is uh, just that fuel line. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that line off, see if anything comes out of it, and we'll go from there. Unfortunately, there's like really no good angle I can put the camera at for this. Um, because everything's so tight down, I'm working on this by myself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just take this line off. Okay, that works. That is draining fuel. Okay. Now I'm gonna take the top line off, see if it still comes out. Okay, so the tank's not clogged, so that's good. But that also tells me that something's not going right here. All right, so culprit is definitely the fuel pump. Go ahead and just turn it over for like four seconds. Yeah, fuel pump, that should be like pouring fuel out right now and it's not, and there's fuel right here in that filter. So I know it's getting into the pump, but the pump's not doing anything. So the fuel pump is definitely what's wrong here. All right, well, I wasn't kidding when I said it was the fuel pump. Look at this, I've never actually seen this before. Ew, oh, geez, yeah, so. As you can see, the arm just moves Hold it right there. freely. It doesn't it's, do anything. It's not it, doing a damn thing. There, so I can hold it up to the sun. You can actually see, right? See that in there? It's sheared in half. Go ahead and like slowly move the arm up, up and down. It's not connected in there. It actually sheared off. So that's great. But yeah, it's uh, the arm sheared off the spring. So this fuel pump is junk. I've actually never had that happen. I've had fuel pumps break and the diaphragms go bad, but I've never had the arm legitimately like, snap. So that's like brand new too. Yeah, I mean, this thing's fresh. So I'm, I think the higher RPM just killed it and just sheared it in half, which really sucks. All right, so here's a better look. So this is the actual piece that drives the spring on the diaphragm to actually, you know, give it fuel pressure and make it do fuel pump things. Uh, and inside here, you can actually totally see it. I, it just sheared right off, I don't know why. So if I open this up a little bit and you guys kind of can see the spring in there, well, there's supposed to be, you know, that piece right there is supposed to be underneath there driving it and it's sheared off completely. So yeah, there's that, that's always great. So you guys can now see it's literally sheared off. I think from the high RPM, it just wasn't having it. But the dumb thing was, I think the highest I got it to was like three grand, 3,200. It's just sheared right off. It's Really kind of pathetic. Come on, what are you guys doing with this stupid fuel pump? I can't win with these cars, man. Even new pumps break. All right, so we got a new fuel pump um, to replace our China Steel other one. So we got literally the same freaking one. So hopefully this one doesn't break at you know freeway RPM cruising speed. Yep, looks it like, works. Looks like it'll do stuff and things. So it's great. All right, so I figured out how to fix the carburetor issue. You just get an entirely new carburetor um, and then a new fuel pump and then um, run all new lines and then break the previous fitting that's right here because i don't know how to loosen a fitting without ripping the fitting off so i gotta buy a new one sorry sean but yeah uh that's all done now so now we're actually gonna hook the wires up and start it yay go me
Okay, so the only thing we're fighting now is uh, timing. It's not off, although I think all the plug wires are one off. I don't know how that happened, um, but I'm looking into it now. Um, but the car runs. It runs really good. It idles really good. Um, it idles, you know, it's it runs on its own. That's all I really cared about. Uh, the fact that I can have it sitting there idling at whatever I choose it to idle at. I think I got it to idle at like 700 RPM, which is what I wanted. Um, although the timing was out of whack, so it was idling kind of rough. So I got to look into that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, we're making headway. So I'm going to pick this video up back in the morning uh, when we're working with getting the timing situated out. And then uh, my temp gauge broke. The fitting for the temp gauge did not, it broke. So um, that wasn't working, so I didn't have temp. But the temp in the car worked, and you guys saw it was staying cool. So that's good. Um, oil pressure was a little bit lower than what I wanted at idle, but at RPM it's up in the 55 range, which is what I what's normal. Um, but idle it doesn't make quite that much, so I was just idle. It makes you know just shy of 20. So I don't I don't know if that's normal or what. I got to look into that a little bit. Um, check all the oil levels. Um, I'll be doing an oil change pretty soon to make sure it's got the correct amount in it because it doesn't have the stock dipstick. Um, so yeah. A couple things so i'm gonna pick this back up in the morning we're getting all the getting it running perfectly and then we can move on to the brakes so we can make sure this thing stops so we can actually try to drive it all right guys day two so now we're actually bringing the red car into the mix so a lot of you guys are commenting why okay so now what the plan what's the plan with the red car so why, why do i have two of these and what am i doing with them i kind of answered it a little bit when i first bought the white one i don't know if those of you who missed that so i'll kind of walk from front to back kind of go from the white car to the red car you'll kind of understand where i'm coming from at least hopefully you do so the red car is kind of a little bit more of a project than the white one is i mean i originally bought the white one as my parts car now it turned out that this engine that's in this car is a big block factory big block it's a 352 but coincidentally enough it's so new that i could read the part numbers off the pistons this was bored over so it's a 405 bore now which makes it a 360 with a three and a half inch stroke and if i put a you know three and three quarter inch stroke 390 crank i could have a 390 so basically this is a 360 right now is what it's bored out to um, but it still has a shorter stroke for an fe but this motor was supposed to go into this car that's the biggest reason i bought it it's because if you guys know the red car's small block kind of uh took a little bit of a turn Oof. Boy, there's two bolts in here. But I don't need it anymore. I have a new engine for it. But anyways, that kind of makes this car less and less of a parts car. I mean, I'll still probably use some interior options. Like I might use the door panels as those aren't too bad. A little bit loose, but the back seat's kind of nice. You know, just some miscellaneous parts. I'll kind of just take two cars and steal a couple odds and ends that I don't have for my red car from this one. Because this one's still my baby. As, as bad as it looks, this is still my car. So the first car I've ever put in my name. All I've ever had is trucks. So this car is my car. That one's just a fun project that was closer to running and driving so I can simply drive this car around and enjoy it and have a running and driving project while I'm building this one. That's really kind of what it's become. As you can see, the interior difference between the two. This one is a bare bones shell with all the parts just kind of scattered throughout it so they don't get all trashed. Um, it's very empty as the other car is complete. When you can straight up visually see between the two cars, it's kind of funny I can do this. This is a complete car. Everything works. I mean, you can see the little light back there. The light down there, come on. This car is a much bigger project. However, this car has nicer things that this one does not. You go into the front suspension on this car and the whole inside of this thing, it's like relatively new, but you can see the suspension components right there have not been touched or changed. It still has those crappy stock crate bolt, crank bolts that we addressed in the previous videos with the red car are right over there. And then walking over to this car, you know, everything in the front end of it is new. So this is still gonna be my nicer car. Um, so this one's getting a much bigger cubic inch engine than that car is. Um, it's going to a big block and a lot nicer stuff, you know, Willwood brakes. So there's a lot of nicer things. This is gonna be the hot rod. Um, so this one's getting a lot nicer stuff in it. So this car really still is the car that I'm building. This one I am keeping. Eventually we will probably sell this car, but we're definitely gonna have some fun with it. And we're not even close to done building this car. I think the max we'll end up doing to it because it's just cosmetic stuff getting it running and driving because it really just is a bunch of mechanical stuff getting it running and driving. Um, it's got brand new wheels and tires on it. However, we might change those for a different style and then I might do a vinyl top because as you can probably see, the roof is not very good on this car. Um, but yeah, just simple stuff. It'd be a simple project. There's not too much I want to do with this car at all. But we are bringing this car into the mix because 
that master cylinder will not come off, the cap will not come off to save my life. It has absolutely no brakes. This car, however, I have gotten this cap off. This master cylinder I know works because this car actually had brakes and they worked. So I'm gonna transfer this master cylinder on to the white car um, because we're gonna be getting a really nice wood wood brake setup for this car. This car is not gonna have stock stuff. Um, so that car is, I'm gonna keep all the stock stuff on this car. Um, and so I'm gonna go and trans transfer all this, uh, the stock stuff over that I don't need. So these brakes don't work at all. I cannot get that cap off. I tried very hard to get that cap off, but I'm just gonna change the master out. I know that master works. I don't know if this one works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swap it out. So. This thing does still have fluid in it, so I want to make sure no that fluid gets on my uh, freshly powder coated stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take the time to go ahead and just put a bag there, something to catch the fluid in case I accidentally press the brake pedal inside when I'm removing this thing. So now coming into the car, I got to take the actual pedal out itself. So it's got one little C clip holding this thing in, and then uh, I should be able to slide the rod out. There's that. And there's no off. Okay. Yeah, I would never. And now we gotta take the other master out. And the problem I had on the other one was I snapped this brake line like clean off on the last one because they suck and they're all rusted. I'm actually gonna try to use some of the PP Blaster. Hey, that comes out strong. Got the new Pro Max or Pro Straw. Let that sit, see if I can get that off and uh, actually not break this line off even though it's not too hard to replace. It's right, you can see it, it goes right down in the proportioning valve right there. It's not very long. I mean, I could probably bend a cleaner one, but if I don't have to break it, I'm not gonna break it. And Sean thinks I'm gonna break it, so I'm gonna try not to break it. But I'll probably break it. Uh, let's see if I get lucky. No way. Shut up. Oh, is it a half inch? Break. What? Why is this a 12? Oh, suck one! Wait, no, this isn't rotating. <laughs> Come on, focus. Come on, focus. There she is. I knew it was going to. I knew it was going to. I knew that was going to snap. Is the brass fitting still good? <laughs> Dude, nothing even came out of this. this I bad. knew that was going to snap. Oh, man, I hate these cars. Wow. Is that fluid in there that's like dry or something? That's, I don't know if it's like rust, liquid rust, but it, yeah, you see that? It looks like it's... I don't know right there, you can, you can kind of see some of it in there. I don't, because all galaxies hate you. <laughs> That's for sure. Jeez. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Well, I'm not gonna make another one of these. At least we can well, make it minty and clean this time. Yeah, instead of whatever the heck that was. All right. Well, it looks like we got to go to the parts store, grab some brake line, figure out what's going on, make sure it screws into that end, and that end. And uh, these cars hate Craig. They really do. I've never had a car this bad. It's like a bad child that you're not even related to. That's why I bought a super cab. <laughs>
All right, so we've been doing a little bit of work as you guys have been seeing. Uh, pulleys are out painted, they're waiting to go back on, uh, and I got the brake lines bent. So this piece was junk, as you guys saw me and Sean pull it off. Uh, the master was junk, so this is the master off the red car, and all new fittings, painted it, made it look all pretty, and then did a nice little 45 bend back down to the proportioning valve right there, a the little tiny brass piece down there. Um, so it just kind of goes right underneath the fuel line, just goes straight to it. Um, and it looks pretty good, you know? I, I like how that brake line looks. It's super direct, it's nice and straight. You know, it looks good from this side. I tried to make it pretty parallel with the valve cover, which is what I think I got. I got. I think I did a pretty good job at it. Um, so I'm happy that it comes out. It's not gonna rub on the control arm. Looks decent. So, as you guys saw, I started cleaning this stuff. So I'm gonna start to spray paint some of this. So it looks a little bit nicer. I got some rust here and here. So I didn't film it that well just because I was trying to get it done. Uh, but I went ahead and I painted a bunch of stuff here uh, and it put the pulleys back on. You saw me paint the pulleys and clean up all the hardware right here. Um, so that actually came out a lot better than I thought. Um, so what I ended up using here was the Engine Enamel by Dupacolor. It's a gloss black color. I used that on both the pulleys. Um, and then I use the same paint on the accessories right here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay my rags back out how I had them. I'll show you guys how I painted this accessory drive without actually painting the engine. And I did not use a single piece of tape. So check this out. So this isn't a basic gist of how I did it. I'm gonna run through this real quick, but I recommend all of you guys that have any you know engine bay you care about whatsoever. It doesn't have to be just an FE or a Ford or anything. Uh, I highly recommend doing this just because it simply is satisfying to look at. It cleans the whole look of the car up. And it honestly, in the end of the day, will make the car worth more money because it looks presentable and it's clean. Um, so as you guys saw in previous videos of this car, this engine brake wasn't very nice and tidy. We haven't really addressed all of it, but the front accessory drive was not the nicest thing in the world to look at. Um, so I went ahead and took the pulleys off because I was getting ready to take the balancer off, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but I went ahead and you know had to change the belts as well. As you can see right here, there's new belts on it. Um, so I went ahead and I painted the pulleys as well with the paint I just said. Now I went ahead and I put rags behind the water pump here so I didn't check, didn't get a bunch of paint on the timing chain cover and then there, there was another rag right here um, but just rags you don't need tape you, this is super you know basic this isn't a, a very touchy you know very technical thing to do um, you just lay some rags you know down underneath a lot of the accessory drive on stuff you don't want to get paint on I even painted this alternator bracket on the car um, so you can see I just basically wrapped the towel around the alternator it was a little tired than this because imagine the this, the water pump pulley, crankshaft pulley, and the belts were not on. Um, so I just kind of wrapped everything around and then I was able to paint everything. You know, I painted the whole front of the water pump. You can see inside there, it's all nice and painted. Um, I just got everything painted with the rags there and then that allowed me to go ahead and just kind of spray paint, you know, kind of hold them with one hand, hold all the lines out of the way, just kind of go real quick and then I'm actually very happy with the way that came out. It's kind of hard. It doesn't really show it that well on camera because the rest of the, you know, engine bay is still kind of a mess. Um, but when, when we all clean this up with the, the wires up, paint the intake manifold and start doing a wire tuck, this engine bay is going to look phenomenal. Trust me. All right, guys. So uh, I'm going to close the video off here. And the reason being is because you can probably hear in a couple of the videos of the, of the car running, it kind of sounds pretty bad, actually. Um, and what's actually going on is I'm actually chasing a very, very bad misfire. Uh, it seems like one of the cylinders on the driver's side is barely firing and about two on the passenger side are having a hard time firing. You can hear it when it's idling out of the tailpipe. You can hear it missing a couple times. Uh, and it's just something I've been chasing for a while now. Check plugs, all new ignition system, you know, everything on the, st on the car is new. Um, that should pertain to having a misfire. So I've kind of crossed things off on my list. And what we're kind of leaning towards is there isn't actually an issue with these heads on this car. Cam should be fine, bottom end is fine, but I'm gonna run a leak down test and I'm gonna run a compression test in the next video. Um, yeah, so I'm a little bit irritated with that. So kind of bear with me, you know, I'm trying to, trying to get videos out when I can, but this car is just running like garbage right now and I really need to figure out what's going on. So as you can see right here, I actually have the rocker arms off the car right now because I'm preparing to do a leak down test. So I just want to make sure all that stuff is good. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to do a leak down test pretty soon and put the rocker arms back on, do a compression test, get my numbers, get that stuff figured out. Hopefully I don't have to take the heads off this car. I'm going to be very angry. But yeah, thank you if you did watch all the way through the video. My ad rates suck right now, so I'm not making hardly any money on videos anymore. I'm really just doing it for you guys. I know you guys enjoy this kind of stuff. So I figured I'd bring it to you. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like the video if you did enjoy. It really would mean a lot to me. Let me know what you do think down in the comments down below. I'm going to work on getting the brakes done on this car because the engine is starting to really piss me off. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.